Senator Ted Cruz, how are you, sir? Mark, I'm doing terrific. How are you today? I'm doing very, very well. I want to tell you, uh, I'm older than you. I've watched this stuff for a long, long time. Even when I was a young man, I used to take the train from Philadelphia to Washington. I would sit in the Senate gallery. I would watch these senators debate over the years. And, of course, as you know, I served in the Reagan administration. I've known many senators. The speech you gave on the Senate floor today was iconic. It was crucially important, not just for conservatives, but anybody who believes in a governmental system that is supposed to work. You laid out, case by case, point by point, an agreement that had been made to make sure that the Export-Import Bank, which is a multi-billion dollar money laundering operation, in my view, that takes the money out of the common taxpayer's pocket and subsidizes Boeing to 40% of its budget and so forth. Tell us what happened. Well, Mark, thank you. And uh, you, you are absolutely right that it is important that all of us stand up and speak the truth. You do it every night on the radio. And, and we're seeing people across the country, they're fed up with the mendacity, with the deception, with the politicians that don't tell them the truth. And, and, and it's why we are bankrupting our kids and grandkids. What happened today is that the majority leader, Senator Mitch McConnell, cut off all of the other amendments on, on the, the highway bill, which is before the Senate, to force through reauthorizing the Export-Import Bank, which, is, as you rightly pointed out, is a classic example of cronyism and corporate welfare. It puts taxpayers on the hook for hundreds of billions of dollars to hand out loan guarantees to a handful of giant corporations. It's expired, but the lobbyists in Washington want it back. And what prompted my, my floor speech this morning is that Mitch McConnell in May had explicitly looked me in the eyes, had looked every Republican senator in the eyes, and had promised that he had not cut a deal to reauthorize the Export-Import Bank. This Stop is right there. The I've got a hard break. I really want to continue this after the bottom of the hour, so I'm not I'm not trying to, to truncate this. Sure. So, so we're going to carry the senator over after the bottom of the hour. That's where it's left. McConnell made a promise that it would not come up, not in this fashion anyway. I'll be right back with Senator Ted Cruz. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call him now, 877-381-3811. So, Senator Ted Cruz, you go to the floor of the Senate today. You're really disturbed that uh, that Senator McConnell had uh, made you a promise, looked you in the eyes and the other Republicans, and he reneged on it. Go right ahead. Well, as I said, at a Senate lunch in the middle of the debate over TPA, Trade Promotion Authority, there was a huddle on the Senate floor, and it looked like a deal was cut. And so at the Senate Republican lunch, I stood up and I asked Mitch McConnell, I said, was there a deal cut? Did you cut a deal to reauthorize the Export-Import Bank? And he looked me in the eyes. He looked every Republican in the eye. He said, there was no deal. There was no deal. There was no deal. He repeated it three times. He said, all I told them was they could offer an amendment just like any other senator could on any amendable bill, but they would get no special privileges, no nothing. He was absolutely explicit on that front. And I'll tell you, Mark, I went back to my, my Senate office at the time, and, and my staff all told me, they said, he's lying to you. What he said is not true. He's lying to you. You know a lot of the members of my staff. They're strong conservatives. They've been around the Senate a long time. And, and uh, you know, when I, I heard my staff say that, I said, you know, uh, I, he may or may not be, but but... I don't see how I can cast a vote based on my suspicion that he's not telling me the truth. If the majority leader looks me in the eyes, if he looks every Republican senator in the eyes and makes an explicit promise that there's no deal to reauthorize the Export-Import Bank, I, I have to take him at his word. Well, what he demonstrated today is that was a mistake, that, that, that he was indeed, it was nothing more than a flat-out lie. Because what he did today is 
he didn't just open up the bill and let anyone amend what they wanted. He personally called up the amendment, which, because he's majority leader, he can do and he can block every other senator out. Then he did what's called filling the tree, which is, as you know, was the procedural game Harry Reid used to do all the time to shut off amendments. And then he did what's called filing cloture on the amendment, which is an extraordinary procedure to force a vote on the amendment. Now, let me tell you all the amendments Mitch McConnell blocked because he wants to, to, to reauthorize this corporate welfare and cronyism. He blocked my amendment to defund Planned Parenthood in the wake of these gruesome videos where they appear to admit to multiple felonies. We should be defunding them, and we should defund them this week. He blocked my amendment to repeal the congressional exemption from Obamacare. He doesn't want to vote on that. It's, it's another example of cronyism. Harry Reid and the Obama administration exempted uh, Congress from the plain language of Obamacare. He blocked amendments to end sanctuary cities to cut off funding. He blocked my amendment for Kate's Law, mandatory minimum five years for an illegal alien convicted of illegal reentry. And he blocked also my amendment saying that no Iranian sanctions can be lifted unless and until Iran recognizes Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state and releases the four American hostages they're holding. Now, every one of those are priorities of the American people. They matter, but they don't matter to the lobbyists in Washington, and unfortunately... So he would not even allow a vote. He would not even allow a vote on any of that, correct? He, he did... It, it, correct. He did exactly what Harry Reid does, which is fill the tree... So no, no one can get the amendments that actually matter to the American people because in, in leadership's view, and by the way, in this, Mitch McConnell and Harry Reid are arm in arm. In fact, Harry Reid tweeted out a tweet thanking Mitch McConnell for his great leadership reauthorizing the corporate welfare of the Export-Import Bank. I, I, I mean, it's, it, it's one party. It's, it's the McConnell-Reid leadership team, and they fight for the same priorities. I mean, if you think about it, Mark, in, in six months that we've had a Republican majority in the Senate, what have we done? We passed a trillion-dollar cromnibus filled with corporate welfare and pork. We funded Obamacare. We funded President Obama's unconstitutional executive amnesty, and we confirmed Loretta Lynch as attorney general. Every one of those is exactly what Harry Reid would have done. How exactly does Republican leadership's priorities differ at all? from that of Harry Reid and the Democrats. It's why people are fed up with politicians who don't tell them the truth. Senator, do you know how many vetoes Barack Obama has issued in six and a half years? In the last six months? Six and a half years. Six and a half years, I can think of one. Four. Four. That's a modern, all-time low. Modern. Reagan issued 78. Pocket vetoes and full vetoes. In other words, Obama's either running the government by executive fiat, or he's getting bills that he likes and he's signing them. It, it's exactly right. You know, as you know, Mark, I, I have a new book, A Time for Truth, where, where I detail what goes on behind closed doors at the Republican lunches, the same sort of lunch that, unfortunately, Mitch McConnell lied to everybody in. The, the opening chapter of the book is entitled Mendacity, and it describes the Republican lunches and the capitulation on the debt ceiling where we gave Barack Obama and Harry Reid the ability to add trillions more in debt to, to our children and grandchildren while doing nothing about it. And we need leaders who will stand up and speak the truth. You go to this luncheon, I hope you have a food taster next time. <laughs> Probably going to need it. Well, the, 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 the knives are, are coming out, and, and you know, I've, I've already joked that we, we may need more than one food taster. And, and, uh, and, in fact, I was joking to my team. I said, well, we may get, like Barack Obama, we may get Secret Service protection earlier on the presidential campaign just from the death threats that are going to come from my colleagues. I'll tell you what amazes me. It amazes me how the inside the Beltway and related media, whether left-wing or right, immediately jump to his defense and immediately start impugning your motives and so forth. In other words, you're doing this because you're running for president. Now, by the way, many of them are running for the Senate again. And, of course, uh, uh, you guys are politicians. So your purposes are political and their purposes are pure. 
I feel you went to the Senate floor, you laid it all out. This doesn't help you politically. I mean, it's it's going to be your persona non grata with these people. Well, and, and it is interesting, the way the Washington cartel works, the Washington cartel is what I call career politicians in both parties who get in bed with lobbyists and special interests, and the media is part of it, is they vilify anyone who exposes what they're doing. What I've tried to do in office more than anything, Mark, has been tell the truth and do what I said I would do. We should expect that from everyone. And, you know, one of the amazing things, I think people are hungry for someone to tell them the truth. One of the amazing things is out of 16 candidates for the, on the Republican side for president, do you know which campaign has raised the most hard money out of all 16? Yours, I think. We have. $14.3 million. Jeb Bush is in second at $11.4 million. If I'd have told you three months ago we were going to outraise Every Republican candidate, including Jeb Bush, you'd have said I was stark raving, bark at the moon, nuts. Now explain to the audience, hard money is are, are, are limited, s- relatively small contributions from people, and the and the soft money are these massive packs where they can raise an enormous amount of money. That, that, that is exactly right. The hard money is the money the campaign raises itself. So what we've seen, the $14.3 million came from o- over 175,000 contributions in all 50 states. The average contribution was $81. People came to TedCruz.org. TedCruz.org, they contributed. We have contributors in roughly half of the zip codes in America, 48.1%. It is an incredible grassroots uprising. It's it's the men and women uh, that, that, that listen to you every night that are fed up with politicians who don't do what they said. They're looking for someone who will tell them the truth and actually stand for the Constitution and principles of freedom, not just be a campaign conservative, but be a consistent conservative every day of the week. So which one of the other Republicans running for president called you today and said, great job? Uh, Not a one. None of these governors and former governors who are appalled by what's going on in Washington? Uh, Not a one. And I I will say one of the real tests that I think Republican primary voters are going to apply to any candidate is when have you stood up to the Washington cartel? Not just Democrats. It's easy to give a speech and say, I oppose Barack Obama. Any Republican can do that. When have you stood up to your own party, leadership in your own party, to the corruption and cronyism? And when have you taken the beatings that come from Republican leadership? And there is a sharp differential. You know, in two weeks when we have the first Republican debate, I'll be the only major candidate standing on that stage, for example who has never supported amnesty. Everyone else there has been a vocal, vigorous, outspoken defender of amnesty. Washington cartel doesn't like it when you stand up against amnesty because the K Street lobbyists and Wall Street support amnesty. It's cheap labor for them. And they go after you. And we need someone who's demonstrated they can stand up to the Washington cartel. And in the 2016 field, there are not a whole lot of folks who can point to much of anything on that. I, I, and I want my audience to understand, this fight that you're having is a fight that I recollect that Reagan had. Now, he had it a l- slightly differently. He wasn't in the Senate. He was an ex-governor. But he had to fight these same forces. He had to fight his way out of this box. And the Bush family was blocking him. The Ford people were blocking him. The Republican National Committee was fighting him. Mitch McConnell was a Ford guy, by the way. And so they had a fight. He had a fight to get through the Republican establishment in order to make him of self available in the general election. And that's, I think, what you're trying to say. You say, "Look, I got to fight through all this in order to get to the general election." You, you are absolutely right. As you know, Reagan primary Gerald Ford in 1976. You want to tick off Republican leadership? Come within an inch of defeating the incumbent Republican primary president in a primary and he took on the Washington cartel and he changed it because the Reagan revolution millions of men and women rose up and that tidal wave transformed Washington that's the only way we can change it is if 2016 I believe it's going to be an election like 1980 that we need a mandate from the people enough is enough stop talking about it actually repeal Obamacare stop talking about it actually reform the tax code and adopt a flat tax and abolish the IRS. Stop talking about it. End President Obama's unconstitutional amnesty. That will only happen if there's a mandate from the people. And, and that's, 
that's where the energy and passion from our campaign is coming from, is from the people, and, and, and its inspiration is exactly what Reagan said, which is the way we win is we paint in bold colors, not pale pastels. Reagan was willing to take on the Washington cartel. It's the only way we're going to change Washington. Well, I want to thank you for something I've never seen before, but I was applauding to myself. I do that from time to time, as I was... Uh, <laughs> watching your magnificent speech and it wasn't written it came from the heart it came from the mind it was incredible now if people want to support you or get in contact where do they go they go to tedcruz.org tedcruz.org we've had 175,000 contributions and, it, and it's really you know all the washington lobbyists all the special interests they're backing the other candidates in this race the other republicans because they know they're, that many of them are not going to rock the boat they're not going to end the gravy train they're going to keep it, the corporate welfare going keep drowning our country in deficits and debt our support is coming from millions of courageous conservatives that recognize if we don't take it from the people we will never change washington if it doesn't come from we the people all right senator well done you take care of yourself well, thank you, my friend, and, and keep speaking the truth every night. It has never been more needed. There has never been more a time for truth than right now. God bless. You take care now.